Hey y'all, it's Chris here with Rockin' 8 Farm and I'm out in the garden today because it's time for another Central Texas Fall Gardening Update. Now, I would love to be taking y'all around on some amazing little garden tour right now, but y'all, we have more important things to talk about because I bet y'all are going through it right now too. My wife comes running into me and she says, honey, there's something in getting all the brassicas. They're all, the leaves all look like lace. And then she proceeded to describe the little bugger, the little guilty party, but it really wasn't necessary. As soon as she said something's getting all the brassicas, I knew what I had in my garden, y'all. Cabbage worms. Uh, hates me some cabbage worms. So how do y'all know if you're having issues with cabbage worms? Well, y'all, it's actually pretty darn simple. Number one, you should have been looking in advance. Number two, you should have put some protective stuff into place like I did not. And number three, if your brassicas, your cabbage, your broccoli, your cauliflower looks like this, well, you might be lucky because you're catching it in the early stages. Because if you wait a little longer, it looks like this. And if you wait even longer than that, it looks like this. So first of all, what the heck is this cabbage worm? Uh, what are some of its life cycles? Um, and then we can talk about like how to deter it, prevent it really, and then how do we get rid of it? So your cabbage worm is gonna start out its life phase as really a relatively pretty little butterfly. Well, when you see pretty little white butterflies in your garden, not a good thing. We'll talk about preventative measures in a minute. Pretty little white butterfly, also known as a cabbage moth or a cabbage butterfly, is going to lay its eggs on your brassicas. So phase one, butterfly. Phase two, little teeny tiny black eggs. Then we get a little tiny worm and then eventually goes right back to being a moth. Now to add insult to injury, what does Chris have going on in his garden? Not one type of cabbage worm, but two. The one I just showed you is the cross-striped cabbage worm. But I've got the green suckers too. See them right there? These ones are hard to find. They blend in with the leaves. Well, unfortunately, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this plant leaf by leaf, finding all of the little buggers and picking them all off individually. to give them a little squish. Now, the plants aren't huge and they're relatively easy to find. They especially like to hide in the little cracks and crevices. So this shouldn't take me too long. But then what I'm gonna have to do is come back in with another preventative measure because the chances are I might miss things like some of these eggs. All right, so I've got probably a couple of hours of hand picking these little boogers off of all of my brassicas. Luckily, I don't have too many brassicas. Um, there is another little remedy that I'm gonna teach y'all how to make in a minute, but how could I have prevented this? So if you're already a zone seven, eight, or more specifically like a central Texas gardener, then um, if, you're, if you already see the damage on your plants, it's too late. You need to start doing what I'm doing, picking them off by hand, and then we'll talk about another little remedy. But if you're just getting your brassicas in the ground or you don't have any damage yet, what can you do to protect them? Well, we need to protect them from the butterfly. So row covers are gonna do an awesome job for you. I have never used row covers because I've never been a huge fall gardener. After seeing what happened here, you can guarantee I'm gonna get some row covers on this stuff next year. Another reason I didn't want row covers is because the whole reason we put all this greenery in was for my daughter's wedding, which took place kind of right back here behind me. And this portion of the garden could be seen by all of her guests. So we put in all these brassicas that we knew would get big and leafy fairly quick and we planted a ton of flowers and put a bunch of color in here and we didn't put row covers on anything because we wanted it all to look pretty so basically what we did is we created the absolute perfect environment for these little butterflies to come in and lay their eggs all over my brassicas we had all of the beautiful colored sweet nectared flowers to attract them into the garden they laid their eggs on their favorite food and now i'm dealing with the problem so number one way to prevent cabbage worm damage on your cabbages and other brassicas row covers y'all if the butterfly can't land on the plants they can't lay their eggs on the plants no worms 
Another preventative measure that we could have taken is a little something called companion planting. I'm not gonna get into the weeds about what companion planting is, but basically it's plants that help out plants. Now there are some different types of companions. For example, things like marigolds, tomatoes, they're supposed to just create like a stinky, uninhabitable environment for things like cabbage worms. Whereas planting something like buckwheat or yarrow, that's gonna draw in beneficial insects that are going to eat the cabbage worms. And then you can also do sacrificial companion planting. See. Cabbage worms, probably one of their favorite foods is collard greens. So you plant a bunch of collard greens kind of intermingled with your brassicas. When those collard greens start getting hammered, I mean just hammered, you pull them out, eggs, worms and all, throw that in the burn pit, and now the damage to your brassicas is gonna be considerably less. The last method, and it's the method I'm gonna use as soon as I get done picking all these bugs off, is I am going to make a garlic pepper tea. So what exactly is a garlic pepper tea? It's just like it sounds. I'm going to take two bulbs of garlic. Notice I didn't say cloves, I said two bulbs. I'm gonna look around and see what I've got for hot peppers and I'm gonna put six to eight of the hottest peppers I have. You're gonna fill your blender up about halfway with warm water and you're gonna pulverize that thing until it is just liquid. At that point, I'm gonna run it through a strainer to get the solids back out of it. I'm going to take the resulting liquid, which is a very hot, very garlicky water, and I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid Dawn dish soap to it. I would say about two tablespoons. Kind of stir that in nicely, and now I've got my concentrate. I'll take that concentrate, I'll add it to a quart size spray bottle, about a quarter cup to a quart size spray bottle, top it off with water, and then I'm gonna come out here and spray everything. Now in just a few days, we're expecting some rain. By the time I post this video, I think it will actually be the next day that we're expecting rain on Wednesday. Um, so I'm gonna have to come back out after the rain. But you know what, I should really repeat that treatment about every week anyhow. I'm gonna make sure I'm spraying the entire plant underside of the leaves as well. Basically, it's a hot, stinky, spicy, garlicky, sounds pretty good to me actually, but the bugs hate it. If you've already started to see bug damage, get down on those hands and knees and get those bugs off of there, and then get those plants sprayed with that garlic pepper tea. If you haven't put your plants in the ground yet, there is still a chance that these butterflies are floating around. So get those row covers on those plants as well. Again, this garden, this year, is not gonna get a row cover on it most likely because I've got other things that I need to spend money on. I plant these plants again next year. Yeah, we're definitely gonna put them in row covers. If you have any other questions about these cabbage worms or how to protect your brassicas from these cabbage worms, drop them down in the comment section or feel free to hit me up via email, rockin8farm at gmail.com. I hope some of my zone seven and eight gardeners out there have found this video helpful. I hope I was able to give you a little bit of guidance and get your garden back in shape. And if this video was just a little too level 101 for you, well y'all, what do you expect? I am just a redneck permaculture hippie pig farmer from Ding Dong, Texas. So until I see y'all again, this has been Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm. Good luck on those fall gardens. Be happy and live healthy.